And we have with us a lady who's no stranger to the Observer, Member of Parliament for St. Augustine and UNC Shadow Minister of Local Government, Ms. Khadija Amin. A pleasant good evening to you, Ms. Amin. Good evening, Mikey Kay, and of course, good evening to all your listeners. Yeah. Let, let's get right into it. PNM did liposuction on local government. And I, I know that that's basically uh, your claim during your contribution to the budget debate earlier today. Liposuction on local government. I find that rather interesting because we heard so much about local government reform. And it seems that narrative, for whatever reason, has died down. And many people are still asking, what exactly or when is this reform that was spoken about going to be implemented to benefit the citizens of this country? Uh, you claim that the PNM is doing to local government corporations that through its local government reform. Please expand. appreciation for cosmetic things over substantial things. And I thought liposuction being a cosmetic procedure where, you know, fat is sucked out from under your skin. It so reminded me because it's a cosmetic procedure. It, it just, I felt it was an apt description of the procedure the minister has been carrying out on the regional corporations where he's sucking the funding out of the corporations they would be given an allocation in the budget and then they would not get the full amount in releases and then the following year they will get less and less and so in every um, area in every regional corporation we have seen a tremendous decline in the allocation to these studies so for instance in the mayaro region they will tell you that they have uh, 12 recreation grounds. They, they tell you the number of recreation grounds and the amount of money that they got this year. But when you check what they got last year and the year before, you will see there's a steady decline. When the mayor Regional Corporation is not able to maintain their recreation grounds, the minister will then go to the population and say that is why we need property tax. When Tunapuna Piaco region, which is led by the PNM, get less and less money every year. And I'm still using that as an example because St. Augustine constituency falls into Napuna region. I am witnessing the decline in the state of the road. I have McEnroy Street a, a, a crossing collapse, a big hole, a man to fit in the hole in the middle of McEnroy Street in Curap in a built up area in a university city. And I am seeing that the regional corporation does not have the funding to fix these things. And yet, you are seeing a decline, a decrease in the funding. And then they come to see, that is why you need to pay property tax, because you need to get money to fix your roads. And I am saying, if you give the regional corporation their just due, you will not be in that predicament. But I think they are deliberately doing it to prove to the population to prove their case of why they need property tax. And in fact, what I saw observed this year yeah. is that they have placed a new line item in every regional corporation. And under there, they have an, a different allocation. So for instance, in Port of Spain Corporation, it's 8 million. In, um, I think Arima, it's about 10 million. In Separia, it's 10 million. Um, I really am waiting for the committee stage of the standing finance committee in Parliament to ask how they arrive at this figure. Um, and uh, this, they say, is for the proceeds of property tax. So you see some corporations have 12 million, and they, they have given the corporation, well, if, you, if they project that they should collect 12 million in property tax, mm -hmm. they have given them 12 million less than the subvention. So yeah, I, I, property tax does not mean that they are getting additional money. Is that if you want the bare necessities to survive, you must comply with government's property tax. And I, I find it is um, being forceful. I think it's poor planning. Yeah. The government has not collected a cent of property tax yet. And but they have put that in the allocation and, and they are fooling and, the population. And, and that's the thing about it. And it's very, very cloudy. And I mean, people are, are walking around quite lost about this, this issue. Um, as well as it's going to take some time to put some of these things together. So according to the minister, 
um, in the interim, they're going to have allocation. But again, that ugly scenario of geographical discrimination raises its head. Um, these are not our supporters. They don't vote for us. Um, you're saying that you're going to give an allocation based on the size of the area and, and all of that. Who's going to work out all of these logistics um, in order to get these things done? Well, I have also delved into the actual allocation. When the minister denies that there is geographic discrimination, I have the evidence. There are seven PNM-led corporations and seven UNC-led corporations. When you look at the population overall, they have roughly about similar population. One, um, the PNM has 49% of the population, and the UNC corporations have 51% of the population. When you look at the allocation, however, and you total the UNC corporation to the PNM corporation, you see a huge disparity in the funding. You would think that if the funding were fair, it would be similar in terms of the percentage distribution. It is not. The PNM has seven regional corporations, the UNC has seven, yet the PNM corporations get millions more in the budget every year. And they continue with that pattern. They continue every time they allocate money to reach certain regional corporations. The corporation has to apply for the funding and they delay the releases until the end of the financial year. And that is what they say, they lose the money. And they're now accusing the corporations of running things badly. It is the same thing that they, the minister is now trying to blame somebody else for it. The debacle in regional corporations with procurement. Um, I think the minister, they, I mean, they have been speaking about reform, reform, reform. They have not been doing anything in, to make reform a reality. So what happens is that you have the law which was passed in 2021. What prevents the government from putting the things in the reform into effect? When you had the only section that they attempted to proclaim was that section to change the term of office from three years to four years. And that was because they wanted to postpone the election. They yeah. were stopped in their tracks because the UN took the matter to court and won. Since then, they have not attempted to proclaim anything else in the legislation. In the Minister of Finance, Colin spoke about executive councils. All those things are in the reform, but they have not been proclaimed. You have a, a set of councillors elected on the 14th of August for a four-year term. You cannot go halfway through and change the terms and conditions of engagement of employment of those councillors, just so you know. You will end up back in the court. Because if you elected a councillor for four years to be a part-time representative, and that councillor has a full-time job as a teacher or a public servant, which they go to work, and they also do their work as councillors. There are many people like that. There are councillors who... Uh, attorneys at law, for example, or they have some kind of professional practice. The law is that when you become a full-time member, you can no longer practice law. You can no longer have another job. Right. And so, halfway in the term now, if you proclaim that, you are now forcing counselors to leave their job, leave their practice, or resign their seat and have a by-election. In Chaguanas, where in Chaguanas Borough, there's a PNM councillor who is an attorney at law. She will have to stop practicing completely and be a full time uh, and, and if she wishes to be that. But one would and one would think that there would have been across the board. Right, but one would think that there would have been consultations and many uh, you know conversations uh, on this issue. I mean, I mean, why is this coming up now when, when so much of it was said about reform and reform? And people, of course, bought into the fact that all of this reform was ensuring that uh, recreational grounds, uh, lighting, garbage collection, everything is going to be taken care of in our community. Now you're talking about some hurdles that should have been foreseen even before trying to implement any sort of new changes. Well, I think if there was an interest, a genuine interest, some of these sections would have been proclaimed before the local government election so that they would have been given effect in the new term. 
So, for example, the section that they did eventually proclaim, which is that a term of office will be four years, right. that has taken effect because it was proclaimed before the election and the new councillors were elected for a four-year term. If you wanted the councillors to be elected on a full-time basis, you would have had to propose that, proclaim that before the reform, um, before the election. You see? So I don't think they intended to do it at all. And they are talking about it. But the truth is, it's going. they have to wait until the end of this four-year term before they can effect that. Right. So, so basically, so you see the trick. buying into that is, is definitely... Is, is not something that we could can, because it's not going to materialize until after. You have to wait until this entire term of office, the four year term that these councillors elected for, is complete. All right. So moving forward, we know there's property tax coming. The finance minister made that crystal clear in his budget presentation. Uh, we know that there's going to be some hiccups, according to what he said. In the meantime, in the interim, there's going to be some allocations. Um, again, who is to determine as far as the projects and things that need to be done? Uh, is it going to be a situation where some areas are going to be able to fulfill whatever it is that they need and some corporations are simply going to be left behind with many of the Burgesses complaining about service? Yeah, what is, yeah, my concern is there are a number of regions where the data shows um, you have higher levels of poverty, for instance. Right. You have, like, for instance, the more rural areas. When you consider the value of the homes in those areas, because it's residential tax, compared to areas like, let's say, in the Tigo Martin region, or even in the Tunapuna region, and I compare Sandy Grandi and, let's say, Mayaro Corporation, consider the houses that you meet there. You see a lot of wooden houses, you see smaller houses, houses of lower value. And the property tax that could be collected in, a, in, a, in each region. And ask yourself if you are not widening the gap when it comes to the disparity in funding. Yeah. And how the government has not told us how they plan to address that. I also feel that they could have started with the property tax with commercial properties instead of residential. Um, properties because, you know, um, people who own commercial property can still factor that into the cost of, the, of doing business as opposed to a resident where that is just an increased cost on their, on their, their table that they feed them. And, 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 and I, I agree with you. I agree with you on that. And, and of course, you have the local government minister talking about apps, many of these apps. And, and I think you mentioned that in your presentation today as far as um, all of these things that were promised that were going to help us make it easier just yes. at our fingertip and, and yet still nothing has come about. Yes, I call it the apps man. Because every, you are, I mean, this year he's talking about an app for municipal police to monitor municipal police. Last year he was talking about an app to track complaints. Then this year he was describing an app that he said was in the design stages and I thought it was a new app, but he was really talking about the one that he spoke about last year. So it has not materialized. It's still in the design stage. But you can't, every, if every time you talk about these apps, we question, of course, when it will, will it become applicable? And we see, we, I mean, we have seen year after year promises, promises, promises. So an app here, an app there, everywhere, an app, app, app. People are going to refer to you as the app man. And yeah. this is a minister whom I advised on the very first day I spoke in Parliament after he was appointed. Pocket squares does not fix potholes. Apps and app without application will not solve problems. This is a minister who does not go down on the ground. And local government really is about being on the ground. And I feel that he takes whatever advice and sometimes he's misinformed and it's embarrassing for him as a minister. But he doesn't realize and, it. And, 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 and when you say go on the ground, I mean, it, it shouldn't be something based on a photo up. I mean, there are people with serious questions, serious concerns. I mean, you still have people who are saying, when I go to the corporation, I'm being told that my, um, my estate or my residence is not on the corporation map. And they're trying to figure out, there's so many things that need to be filled in. And, and again, if you're going on the ground... Let me tell you, that is an excuse that the PNM uses because there are many developments 
that have not been properly vested in the corporation, even HDC developments. And what happens is that over time, the regional corporation takes over responsibilities for garbage collection, cutting the grass, and so on. That is a cost to the corporation without that space being invested in the corporation. When we, the People's Partnership was in government, I was the chairman of Tunapuna Piyaku Corporation, and there were provisions for what we called orphaned roads. So there are Ministry of Works roads, there are local roads vested in the regional corporation, and then there are other roads that does not fall under works, but it's not vested in the corporation. And you know what we said? We took the responsibility that all the public roads will be maintained by the government, developed by the government, and we took responsibility. So it, we, we stopped bouncing people around to say, that road is work, that road is agriculture, that road is local government, that's not yeah. vested in us. You can't be giving people, because when you go for people's vote, you know, ask them if the road they're living on is a government road, if it's a mm. private road. You don't ask them that. So why you are, why all of a sudden after you get the vote, you must tell them, um, no, that road not vested here. You have to facilitate service to people. And that was a difference in approach and governance that I saw firsthand that I think is missing now, that political will to get yeah. it done rather than make an excuse of why it should not be done. I, and I think they continue to do that because they want to insist on the population to justify property tax. And I want to agree with you on that. We've got to close off here. I want to thank you so much for taking time out. I know you had to leave uh, the house to come out and uh, do this interview. Thank you so much again. All the best of luck to you and your entire team and keep up the good work. I appreciate it very much. Thank you, you so much. Again. All right.